This one is about the spinster of Amherst, Emily Dickinson, one of my favorite poets. So I realize that when the underlined section is really long, as it is here, it can be very confusing. And of course, if you just read through answer choices A through E, read through them word for word, that's going to be incredibly confusing. In fact, that's much more difficult than reading Emily Dickinson's poetry. So we're really going to try and simplify this. And one of the simplest grammar rules is simply a sentence has to have a noun and a verb. And the noun and the verb have to agree, that sort of thing. So the noun of this sentence clearly is the letters, Emily Dickinson's letters. So Emily Dickinson's letters were written. OK, that works. And then we have a participle here outnumbering. But this participial phrase outnumbering her letters to anyone else, that's a modifier. And it's certainly not modifying the thing it touches. It's certainly not modifying 1886. It's not really clear what it should be modifying. And so we have a, a real problem with that modifier. So answer choice A is just out. So answer choice B, were written, a bona fide verb, and then just another verb, outnumber. And this is a little bit strange because when you have two verbs in a sentence, you need some kind of conjunction or connection. You need the word and or the word but or something. I go to the store and I go home, something like that. Not just the two verbs mashed together like that without anything joining them. So that's a problem there. And also there are some problems in the middle of that passage, middle of that choice, but we won't even deal with those. Answer choice B is out. Answer choice C. Now we have a participle. Okay. Emily Dickinson's letter is written in such and such and outnumbering another participle. And the problem here is that we have two participles and there's no verb. Answer choice C is a sentence without a verb at all. So, of course, that's just a train wreck disaster. That one is completely wrong. So then we get to answer choice D. And now we construct a subordinate clause. So within the subordinate clause, clause of course, we have to have a, a subject and a verb. So the, the relative pronoun, which is the subject. And there's a bona fide verb here. So which were written. So inside the clause, we're doing fine. But the problem is, on the outside, again, all we have is a participle. So the letters, which were written, end out numbering. That's not a complete sentence because we don't have an actual bona fide verb in the independent clause of the sentence. So that one is out also. So we've eliminated four. We, we hope that E is going to work. What we have in E is we have the subordinate clause again. That's perfectly fine, has the verb inside of it. And now we get a bona fide verb. So this is the subject, and this is the verb. The letters outnumber. That makes perfect sense. And E is by far the best answer choice. Miss Emily Dickinson would be proud.